So I'll give you the details on uh, two span PSC I girder, girder and slab bridge, which will be a non continuous bridge. So moving on uh, with the details of the bridge. So it's going to be a two span non continuous bridge and the transverse width of the bridge will be 15 meters. The moving clothes uh, will be using Euro code and uh, for time dependent property we'll be defining as per CBFIP property and further we'll be defining these cross sections for the uh, so this cross section over here this is going to be for the mid section and the thicker section will be for the end section and then this is going to be the longitudinal uh, variation of cross section so first 1.5 meters will be support section then followed by 2 meters will be the varying section which the cross section will vary from mid section to support section and then there's going to be mid section in between and then there is going to be an inter intermediate diaphragm at this location so similar kind of uh, property will be followed for the other half so for all the girders this kind of properties will be followed and then this will be the construction stages which we are going to consider the first stage is going to be just substructure and then in the second stage it's going to be uh, the girders will be placed uh, on the piers and abutments and then the diaphragms will be casted and then over that in the third first uh, step uh, the dead load of slab will be acting over the girders wherein the girder will be just girder section and not a composite section and followed by that in the third two uh, the next stage the slab will harden and the property will transform into a composite girder property followed by will be imp uh, inputting the crash barrier load and the wearing course load on the deck and then we'll give uh, long-term age so that creep and shrinkage properties will be considered for the long-term effects so we'll start with the software working so this is the basic module uh, how the software look, looks like so if you see on the top this half deals with uh, the menus view menus for viewing the structure structure menu is for uh, various kinds of wizards you can find so we'll be using this pre-stressed composite bridge wizard today and then followed by uh, you're having nodes and elements tab wherein you uh, it shows you the various options of editing the geometry the nodal parameters and this portion is for editing elemental parameters and then followed by properties so here you can see uh, this is for various kinds of properties definition for material property section property plastic material property so all kinds of properties definition can be done from here and then this is boundary so this boundary definition again is uh, related to all the supports and connections which have to be done and then followed by loads so we have all kinds of loads available in Midas then moving on uh, when we move to the analysis portion and I'll explain you all these parts so first and foremost we will define a material for our girder so the material for the girder I will take as per euro code I'll click on material properties click on add and over here I'll add a concrete section as per Eurocode definition I will take a C35 grade concrete and add it same way I will add one more uh, material let's say C25 for my slab say slab is having a different grade so we are taking C25 property for that so these properties again these are the properties of the concrete if you want you can make this none these properties will be open for editing so you can edit these properties modulus of elasticity positive ratio followed by a thermal coefficient expansion coefficient and the weight density of concrete 
then the next material which we are going to add is going to be for the substructure. So for substructure, for the pier and pier cap at intermediate pier location, I'm adding again a concrete prop property. So let's say I'm selecting C25 again and I will give it name substructure and add it and then another property for the pre-stressing uh, tendon. So this uh, property will be a steel property. So I'm selecting EN05 and I'm defining uh, this uh, material I'm taking and I'm just change, I'll just change the name to tendon. So this property I'm going to use for the pre-stressing steel which I'm going to use in the, pre uh, in the PSC girdles and then followed by uh, the last property which I'm defining for the diaphragm. So for the diaphragm, again, I'll define a concrete property, say uh, as per Eurocode itself, I am defining an MC35 property, a name I'll give diaphragm. Also, uh, we, are, we could have defined the same property, this these two properties, to substructure and diaphragm as well, but these two properties we are going to assign time-dependent uh, properties. So the creep and shrinkage we want in the longitudinal direction and not in the transverse direction and also we don't want the creep and shrinkage to be considered for the substructure because these properties are not going to make any difference in the transverse and vertical direction. The time dependent properties creep and shrinkage so we are interested in longitudinal shrinking of the structure. That's why we have created these two properties to which we are going to assign the creep and shrinkage properties for the longitudinal variation in stresses. So next I'm going to define as I was talking about the creep and shrinkage definition. I'll go to this creep and shrinkage, click on add. So I will add as per CEBF 5P. 2010, I will add a property C35 oblique 25. So for C35 blade, I'm defining creep and shrinkage property. I need to give the compressive strength, uh, cylindrical strength. I'm giving a 35 over here and uh, then notional size. So I'm giving a trial notional size over here. Notional size is a parameter which varies as per the cross-section. So you can see the formula is 2 into cross-sectional area by perimeter. So the notional size is going to vary for our girder cross-sections. So uh, I'm just defining a trial notional size and it will be cal calculated automatically by the software. So when I click on show calculation results, so you can see the variation of creep coefficient and shrinkage strain over here for this notional size. But along the length of girder, the cross-sectional size is going to vary, the notional size is going to vary, so the properties will be automatically calculated for corresponding notional sizes. When I click on OK, so this property gets added. In a similar fashion, I will add C25 property for the slab material. So I'm adding C25 property. For C25, I'm putting uh, material uh, creep and shrinkage. I'll input the 25, uh, 28 days strength as 25 MPA, cylindrical strength. And this also, again, I'll enter notional size of 1000 mm itself and I'll add it. Again, we are having, if you see, we are having various codes available over here as well to define the creep and shrinkage parameters. Also, so all these codes are available. Also, one can go in for a user-defined definition of creep and shrinkage functions. So, uh, moving forward, we, I'm going to add another time-dependent property, which is compressive strength. So, I'm clicking on compressive strength. I'll click on add. So, uh, on the basis of this definition, the elasticity variation, as per the uh, number of days of casting, is going to happen. So I'm selecting over here uh, CBF IP 2010. One can go in for the user code selection as well. And then name I will give C35 
competitive strength definition. And this is going to be FCK plus delta F. So delta F as per CBFIP is 8 MPA. So for M35, it's going to be 35 plus 8 MPA. So rather I can just write 43 MPA over here. And when I click on redraw graph, so this is the variation of strength. Same will be the variation of elasticity as well as for the time. And I click on OK, so this gets added. Same way, I'll just add one more property, suite 25. So say suite 25, I will add compression. And uh, as per CBFIP, I'll put 28 days mean strength. So that is going to be again 25 plus 8, that is going to be 33 MPA. So when I click on redraw graph and OK, so this gets added. Now what I'll do is, uh, if you go to works menu over here, in the tree menu, works menu, so it shows you all these properties which we have done, with which we have defined till now. So if you see, uh, we have added two material properties for uh, our deck and slab, and then this is one is for substructure. This one is for pre-stressing steel. The last one is for diaphragm. So these two time-dependent properties, we have to link with these two material properties. So for that, I'm going to click on this material link option. And over here, I'll select M35 properties. And I will double click on this material. Or I can just click and click on this arrow. So it comes to the selected box. And I can then I can click on add or modify. So it gets added. And same way, I'm clicking C25 I'm selecting. And C25 I'm bringing to the right side and adding it. So now, if I just close this, so you can see these properties have turned blue in color because these properties have got linked with this property and this property over here. So whatever is not assigned in the structure comes in blue color. So these properties have not yet been assigned to any elements. That's why they are in blue color. So we'll go ahead and define the Yeah, so we'll go ahead and define further the sectional properties. So if you see sectional properties definition, for section properties definition, I need to go to section properties and I need to click add. So various kinds of sections are again available in the software. So if you see over here, we are here. Uh, we are having this database user types cross sections. So if you see we, as per various uh, codes, we are having the basic cross sections available. If one wants, one can select the cross section and one can click on user. One can edit these cross, cross sectional dimensions as well for the inbuilt sections. So various kinds of cross sections are available. All these cross sections in database user type cross sections can be designed by the software. For moving to the value type cross section here, actually we input the values, we input the properties manually and as per those properties, the analysis will be carried out. Then moving to the SRC, this stands for steel reinforced concrete sections. And then moving to the combined tab, this is for the combined steel sections. These kinds of cross sections again here will be available. And then moving to the PSC tab, this is mainly concerning with the PSC box girder kind of sections. And then moving to the tapper tab, this is for the cross sectional variation. Like in our case too, the cross section is going to vary from mid to support. So So this variation from this cross-section to this cross-section can be defined using a tapered cross-section. So, yeah, so this tapered tab will be useful for defining that kind of cross-section, wherein the cross-sectional size varies from the i-th end to the j-th end. And then moving to the next tab, which is composite tab. So this tab which we are going to, we are going to use today for the definition of our composite girder. So here we can define steel composite sections and PSC composite sections. So first I will make the definition for composite I section. So if you see the I section over here, we will just refer this figure and we will define this cross section. 
So if you see, uh, the width of slab is 3 meters and thickness of slab is 0.25 meters. So the same thing I will enter over here. The width of slab I need to enter over here. So I'll give the name mid cross section. The width of slab is 3 meters and thickness is 250 meters. So I will enter 250 meter mm and there's no HH for the is for the height of haunch. So here we are not considering any haunch, so HH I'll keep it zero. And also if you see the girder is symmetric along the center line. So I'm I'll check on the symmetry option available over here. So I'll check on the symmetry option and then I'll just go down and I will enter these parameters. So if you see we need to enter HL1, HL2, HL3, HL4 and HL5. So HL1 is the top flange thickness followed by HL2 is the haunch thickness, HL3 is the web height and then HL4 is the bottom haunch thickness, HL5 is the bottom flange thickness. So if you see over here in the diagram, we can see 0.15 followed 0.15 is the flange thickness followed by 0.1 meters is the depth of flange and the overall width, overall height of the web is 1.2 meters followed by again 0.1 meters of flange thickness and 0.15 meters of flange thickness. So this data I will just enter it over here in this fashion as it is. So if you see over here, I need to enter 0.15, so oh, sorry, 150 mm, followed by 100 mm is the thickness of haunch, followed by 1200 mm is the height of web, followed by again 100 mm is the thickness of uh, the haunch, and then followed by 150 mm is the width of web. So that is how we have defined these parameters. Now I'm going to define this width and this width at bottom and this width of the web. So if you see the web thickness over here it is 0.3 meters. On the top flange overall width is 0.5 meters and bottom flange width is 0.45 meters. So these definitions I need to make over here. So quickly I will make these definitions so you can see over here these are the rep representations. So BL1 is this half thickness of web. So it is going to be 300 by 2. It's going to be 150 mm. And BL2 is the top flange half thickness. So it is going to be 500 mm. And the bottom flange width BL4 is again 450 mm. So when you complete that definition, so this will be shown over here. Again, as the grades of girder and slab are not same, we need to define this property because over here also for the slab and girder, so I will define slab property over here again as C25 and C35 for the girder. So when you have done this definition, so you will see these are the transformation ratios as per which the slab property will be transformed into girder property as per the grade of the materials. Again, I'm going to model this structure with respect to the top of uh, the cross section. So I'm changing the offset to center top. And I click on OK. So this gets added. When I click on show calculation results, so it shows me the calculation of properties when the cross section is just girder and when the cross section becomes composite. So when I click on OK, so this gets added. So in the same way, we need to add further cross sections. So I will not invest more time adding further cross sections. I will. So if you have cross sections defined in a model, those can be imported. I'll just click on import and I will just refer to a previously defined model and I can import cross sections from there. So I will just import the cross section. So I'll go to download. Uh, I'll just go to the 
respective file so these are the cross sections considered over here I'll just import them so you can see all these cross sections are the mid cross section the support cross section and then the mid to support varying cross section wherein you'll find two cross sections will be there and same way support to mid cross section followed by end diaphragm section intermediate diaphragm section the peer cross section a rectangular peer section and a peer section so if you just see these are the inputs individually inputs have been made for all the cross sections so then now we will generate the model using the structure tab available over here pre-stressed composite structure tab available over here so I will just quickly generate the model using that tab so so I'll go to structure and in this PSC composite bridge wizard so here I'll just explain you the inputs so these are the inputs we have to make over here so our span length is 23 meters and the gap in between is of 40 mm so I'm giving adding 0 0.2, 0 0.02 meters over here which will be become effectively 23 plus 0 0.02 plus 0 0.02 and 23 meters of the other span and then the deck width in transverse direction is 15 meters and the spacing is 40 mm in between the girders from the support the uh, the location of support from the edge of girder is 0.5 meters and then I'm going to model with the substructure so I'm checking on this substructure option so what here I'm giving the this all these are the stiffness of bearing so I'm considering elastomeric bearing will be used under the girders so this is the vertical stiffness kx value and these two values are the horizontal stiffnesses of the bearings this is the height of bearing and then over here I need to locate the material for the substructure and then the cross section for the substructure for the pier cap what is the length of pier cap then the cross section for pier the height of pier and if you have multiple piers then you can give the spacing between piers so here I'm considering just a single pier so I'm not giving any spacing over here so if you want you can just give a spacing over here so by giving the spacing there will be two piers generated connecting the pier cap so that will be a bent kind of pier and then moving to the next tab which is the section tab so here we need to define the thickness of deck followed by what is the relevant material we need to tell the software for deck we are having C25 material girder we are having C35 material followed by di uh, diaphragm which is having diaphragm property and then we are having five girders so I will just write five over here and click on apply and then when you click on the guide so it guides you what should be the reference of the girders and lines which we need to give so for the left side girders the references from the center line of the transverse deck so we need to give negative offsets and the right side girders we need to give positive offsets and we need to continue in a sequence so the first girder offset I'm giving minus 6 meters second girder minus 3 meters third girder I'm considering to be coming at the center fourth girder plus 3 meters and fifth girder plus 6 meters and then this is for the creation of dummy elements the transverse elements for distribution of stiffness in the transverse direction so this I'm giving the number of elements as 21 and then this is as per the division uh, uh, the number of uh, diaphragms you want to create along the length of the span so the number of diaphragms which we can create we can give the number of diaphragms per span 
integral diagrams or we can give the distances over here okay so if you want multiple diagrams then we can give multiple distances from here and then we need to define from here what are the divisions that want we want to create for the girder so for the first two meters we are having support section and followed by for the next two to five meters we are having the support to mid section followed by the mid section which is there from five meters to 18 meters and exactly the same section is there on the for the remaining portion of the girder so these divisions one can create by clicking by entering five over here and defining the distances so here this is the complete length of one girder for the first span and then this is for the second span girders so we have entered various distances as per the division of cross sections and then coming to the next tab which is the tendon definition so this is for defining the pre-stressing tendons so one can give what kind of tendon one wants to give a curved one a harped one so this is the profile of the tendons so h1 is the height from the anchorage end from the top of girder and h2 is the height of the tendons from the bottom of the girder at the central location so that's how these three tendons have been profiled and also we have defined the tendon property so if I just focus upon the tendon property so you can see we have given a name and then the property and then we have selected the pre-stressing steel property from here and then we have defined the cross-sectional area as per the number of strands and then this is the diameter of one uh, cable uh, the sheathing diameter and then the relaxation coefficient can be chosen as per various codes also one can choose user defined relaxation as well one can define and then these are the ultimate strength and uh, yield strength of the strand of the pre-stressing strand and then this is the friction factor and this is the uh, wobble coefficient for the pre-stressing strand and these two parameters are the slips at both the ends the anchorage slip values and then we need to define whether the tendon will be bonded or unbonded from here and you click on OK so this gets added so the same way so this property we, same property we have used one tendon uh, so three cables we are using the same property I am using so these are the two span definitions so the same profiling I am using for both the spans then followed by the load application so the loads again one can define uh, the width of crash barrier the clear carriageway if you are having median so then you can define the median width here I'm taking it as zero and then the intensities of various loads can be defined from here so you can see the barrier intensity the weight concrete load intensity which will be laid over just the girder and then the intensity of the wearing surface and then the thickness of the wearing course Moving load definition, I'll show you later on how to do it. And then moving to the construction stage. Again, this is going to be a typical construction stage like I've shown over here. So first stage is going to be the substructure. Second stage is going to be just girders with diaphragms. Third stage, the wet concrete load over these uh, di uh, girders will be acting. And in the third, second stage, part the, the load will be deactivated and the slab will be activated with and the girder will be becoming composite so the same properties will be followed over here so again we need to define the reinforcement as well because we will be carrying out the design in the software itself so if I just show you so this kind of definition has been made for the reinforcement so if I just show you the more more details about the reinforcement so this is the location of the top layer of reinforcement 
this is the second layer of reinforcement and this is the bottom layer of reinforcement which has been defined over here so one can define the reinforcements very easily giving the references of top of slab and bottom of girder same way we have defined the shear reinforcement as well so this is uh, the spacing of shear reinforcements the vertical stirrups and then the angle will be 90 degrees always because uh, the stirrups are always parallel to the web and then this is the number of legs which we are using per girder we need to define from here so here actually we have taken two legs of 16 diameter 16 mm so that's how we have defined the diagonal or the shear reinforcement same kind of reinforcement definition has been then done for the midsection as well same kind of reinforcement definition can be done so after this when you click on OK so the model will be generated so this is the kind of model which gets generated so if I just show you the details so everything is done in this so if I show you from the base uh, the only thing which we need to change is this definition of properties so what we can do is mid to support property I will just select the support sections I will see them separately and I will select mid to support sections from here I will click on the select button and select this portion which is support to mid cross section over here also this portion is support to mid cross section I will assign it over here support to mid cross section same way the other varying half is mid to support cross section this portion so I will just select these elements and drop this property of mid to support over here so now you can see these cross sections have been assigned also for a uniform tapering we just need to go to properties tapered group and in the tapered group we need to select these elements so first support to mid I will just give a name over here one and add it so now you can see the property is uniformly tapering same way we need to select for the other end too for mid to support cross sections I'll just zoom over those cross sections mid to support cross sections I will just give a group name over here Let's say two and add it so these cross sections are again uniformly tapering from mid to support now for viewing the complete structure one can click on this option over here activate all so this will show me the complete superstructure then I will show you the construction stages involved in this so if I just show you stage 1 has just the pier and pier cap stage 2 is having the definition for the superstructure so you can see uh, this is the definition actually uh, we have not defined the properties for this that's why it's coming like this so I will just uh, show you how to do that that definition has been done from here so we have defined that the mid and support cross sections the mid cross section is going to become composite in 3-2 stage so the same kind of definition we need to de do for support to mid cross sections as well so when we are done with that the model will be looking like this in the second stage it is just the girder and diaphragms and then third one stage you can see over here the wet concrete load will be added in three one stage so here if you see so this actually the wizard automatically generates all these loadings so you need not do that and in the three two stage the cross section is going to become composite so in three two stage it will be reflected like that and further in three in the fourth stage it's going to be the median load and barrier load which is going to be acting on the which will be added 
on the superstructure. So you can see these two loads have been activated. So barrier load, if I just display it, so this is the barrier load which has been applied. Also similar fashion, you can find the varying course load will be there. And fifth stage is for the long term perspective. Now I'll show you how to define the moving load in this. So for definition of moving load, one needs to go to loads and moving loads. And over here, one needs to select the relevant code. So one can select the relevant code. Uh, say moving load. I'm selecting Euro code. So Euro code and then one needs to define the traffic lanes. So if I just click on traffic lanes and show you what all lanes definition we have done. So with respect to center line, we are defining the eccentricity value over here. Different eccentricities have been defined for all these cross sections. Also, one can define the lane with respect to any beam, longitudinal beam in the model. So if you're having a curved bridge, so for a curved bridge as well, we just need to select the beam and give the intensity for the eccentricity with respect to that beam. So say if I am selecting any curved, say I'm selecting this beam and I can take the beam numbers from here. I will just show you how the definition can be done. So I'll just give a name and one can give the eccentricity, say I'm giving five meters from here. So center line of the lane we need to define and then one needs to select the cross beam elements. So the cross beam elements will be containing, if you, if you just see the group, the cross beam elements will be containing all the transverse elements in the group. So what happens is the load will be first placed over the cross beams and then it will be distributed over the longitudinal beams. So you can define a live load with respect to any longitudinal beam and then I'll click on numbers. I'll just paste the, the edge beam numbers over here. Click on add. So that's how we add the lane and then it will be shown over here. So that's how all these lanes have been added and then we need to add the vehicle from here. Again for vehicle definition we are having all the standard vehicle definitions as per various codes. So if I click on standard so it will show you this is for load model 1. If you want these intensities can be edited if you're going for a user defined definition. So it will show you. So these intensities can be edited. If you are finding that uh, you want to define some arbitrary load a different loading so that these intensities can be edited from here. So when I click on OK, so this gets added. So this load again can be assigned by clicking on moving load cases. This load can be assigned to the respective lanes. So one needs to select the load and all the lanes and one needs to select all the lanes at once. So this load will be automatically applied and loaded individually over lanes. So it will, the loading will be carried out individually for all the lanes one by one. So you will get the results for one lane loading, two lane loading, three lane loading and four lane loading as well. So all the critical parameters will be considered. So now if you, if I just show you the results, so after analysis, we can see the results. If I just show you the stresses directly, So, so we can go to stresses, beam stress diagram and then in the first or rather the second stage wherein we are having just the girders. So I'll show you the stresses in the girders. So if you see the stresses in girders. So I'm selecting the part one for the composite section which are the girders and I'm seeing the values at the bottom. 
So you can see these are the stresses at the bottom of girder due to dead load plus the pre-stress which has been applied. And then in the second stage, in the final stage rather, we can see what is the remaining amount of stress which is there and over there, over that we will be placing the live load and other loads. So you can see now, so this is the final stage stress which is around 6 MPA. So this then we can go for a service stage check in the software itself. So for that we need to frame up the load combinations. So for framing up the load combinations, one can go to load combination over here and click on concrete design and you can click on auto generate. So when you click on auto generate, so automatically as per various codes, the combinations will be generated over here. So if you see CLCB3 is the service load combination and these two are the strength combinations. So this comes under concrete design tab. So these combinations will be considered for the design as well. So if I just show you the stresses for CB3 case which is our service stage combination. So in the service stage at the bottom of girder if you see so the level of stresses. So we are having around 0.9 MPA, 0.8 MPA of residual stress. So this is what we actually represent while presenting the design reports to the clients. So if you see this is the final stress which is going to be there after live load placement in the girders. So this is the final plot of the bottom stress in the girders. Similarly one can get the stresses on top of girder, bottom of slab, top of slab and anywhere in the cross section. And then I will show you the design part. For the design one needs to go to PSC tab over here and then one needs to select the code and one needs to select all, check all the parameters and if one wants to check what all things are there in the design parameters one can click on this. So this shows you all the factors, partial safety factors, stress limit factors which are being considered as per Euro code. So again you can find this design is available as per various codes over here. As per Astro code it is available. So PSC composite design, material we're going to select now. So materials we have already defined, what we need to define further is the rebar material for the reinforcement which we have defined. So these are the rebar materials. So I'm selecting class B material for the rebar in deck and rebar in slab. And needs to click on modify so this, this gets updated. And then we need to specify the design output and input positions. So for that one needs to select the relevant element. Say I am selecting particularly this element I want to design and this element is the support section which I want to design. So one needs to select this, these elements and click on apply. So it gets added. So you can click on this and you can find the data relevant over here. Same way one needs to add these parameters in the output position as well, same way, exactly the same way. One needs to select those elements, this element and this element I am selecting and I am putting it, clicking on apply so this will be considered for the design part. And then one needs to specify the service load combinations. One needs to group them whether they are quasi-permanent combination, frequent combination or characteristic combination as per the code. So they, uh, when you are generating automatic combinations then they will be grouped automatically. When you are manually inputting the combinations then you need to group them by yourself. You need to just uh, relate them with the relevant serviceability case. And then one can define the shared connector data from here. So shared connector data again can be defined giving the, the area of the shared connector over the element, how many shear connectors are there. So 
one can give the lateral spacing of the shear connectors and longitudinal spacing of the shear, number of longitudinal shear connectors and the area will come as per the diameter specified so I'm selecting say P10 lateral number is 4 longitudinal number is say 4 so this is the area which has come so one can click OK so this gets added one can give the FY the strength of the shear connectors so also one needs to specify the angle so angle will be 0 degrees only because shear connectors will be perpendicular to this to the surface of slab so that's how one can define the shear connector data and then one needs to click on perform design option so when one clicks on perform design option the design will be performed after that one can click on excel report option so an excel report will be generated so I'll show you the forma format of the Excel report which will be generated. So So if you see over here, this is kind the kind of Excel report which gets generated. So this is the element number, the position for the generation and then these are the partial factors for concrete and steel and then the cross-sectional area before the section becomes composite, after the section becomes composite and then the pre-stressing steel location and the normal reinforcement location and then followed by the checks which will be carried out so you can find the relevant Euro, uh, Euro code clauses as well over here and then check for positive moment to calculation of neutral axis and then the check will be carried out over here so the capacity is this much this is much is the maximum moment which is coming as per the ULS combinations same way the negative moment check is there available in case the hogging moment is there in the girders but, but in our case we are having simply supported girders so there's no hogging moment and then the check for shear as per the relevant clauses and the minimum shear reinforcement for, followed by the interface shear check for the uh, for the uh, shear connectors which we have defined the data shear connectors data which we have defined and then followed by the minimum shear force and the torsional check for the girder so all these checks will be carried out by the software automatically so it's a complete design solution which is there available so one can go and generate the complete design of a PSC girder and slab kind of bridge so for a detailed demo what we'll do is we'll send you a video of uh, a relevant video how to generate it a detailed video in two sessions and then you can go through that video and you will get to know the capabilities of the software and how easy and handy it is so from the from the basic uh, sections generation properties definition to the final stress check in the service combination as well as the ULS check capacity check can be done in the software itself so thank you for attending the webinar so if you have any questions you can post them to us at tech support so I will just give you the ID where you can post the questions you can post them at tech support at midasit.com and we will answer to your questions so thank you